Contrary to popular belief, SGC not even close to being dead at all. PSA setting all new records. We're going to talk about grading data for the month of May. Talk about why is this happening? What's getting graded? And I've got a little rant at the end about the WNBA and Caitlin Clark. Stick around. Hello to all my sports card hobby friends. How the heck are you guys doing? I think I finally got some sleep. Hope everyone is having an amazing weekend. We had our last game of the season, eight, nine-year-old flag football. I'm head coaching, doing my best Sean Payton impression, and it came down to the wire. One of the best games we've played all year. It came down to we threw the ball to the end zone to win, and we had two guys that went for it both at the same time and missed both going for it. But hey, Gotta love the effort. It was a great way to end the season. My first time coaching youth flag football. I've coached youth soccer before. Much different experience. It was a lot of fun with my son, but also a big challenge as well. Guys, we've got a weekly newsletter. and We're going to have heavy giveaways coming your way. The first one is going to be $25 of supplies from Card Capsule. They are going to send out $25 of supplies to one of the newsletter subscribers. We've got about 50 or so, 50-ish that, that have signed up. So odds are in your favor that you could win $25 of free supplies. We'll announce it in that first newsletter that's going to go out Friday, June 7th. So definitely check the link out down below for the free newsletter so that we can stay in touch. Huge thanks to today's video sponsor, DC Sports 87. You might want to sell on eBay, but it's the listing. It's the shipping. What if there's a return? All the extra time and work that goes into actively selling on eBay. I send a lot of my stuff off to DC Sports 87. Easy peasy works like a charm. Definitely check them out today. All right, friends, the monthly gem rate data is out, and we have, believe this or not, not a slowdown at all in card grading. Actually, the opposite. We've got 1.78 million cards graded by the four major grading companies, according to gem rate. Year-over-year -year growth, the highest year-over-year -year growth in 18 months. Think about that for a second. Think about where we've come as far as where a lot of pricing has come down on a lot of cards. But people are still grading like crazy. It has not slowed, even though we have had a lot of people that have gotten out of the hobby. We have had people, you know, they're upset about pricing and this, that, or whatever. But man, it still hums along on the grading side. Let's break down the numbers. SA 1,369. Stop it, Frank, you're rude. 69,000 cards. That's plus 13% month over month plus 35% year over year for PSA. CGC, 184,000 total cards, plus 2% month over month, plus 88% year over year. SGC, 174,000 cards in total. That's plus 6% from last month, which last month was a record for them. Got a new record, setting new records for SGC, plus 97% year over year. That's almost double the output year over year. Beckett, 59,000 cards. They're the only ones that, I know you might be shocked to hear this, they've actually lost negative 6% from month over month, minus 10% year over year. And again, many had said, many, many, oh my gosh, SGC is now a part of the collector's umbrella. PSA is going to just swallow them up. It's going to be Boca Raton PSA. The PSA of the South are going to change the name. SGC is just going to be PSA South. Well, wrong again. Wrong again. They are still humming along, setting new records. Now, on the sports side, PSA did 867,000 cards. And I'm not even going to break down the percentages. I can put it up on the screen because you can see it. 157,000 sports cards for SGC. That's really their bread and butter. Beckett, 30,000 sports cards. CGC, 24,000 sports cards. CGC, really more of a TCG non-sport grading company for the most part for trading cards. They do some sports cards, but they mostly do non-sports cards. The same way the SGC mostly does sports cards, and they also do some TCG as well. So what is driving all of this? And some might say, oh, it's specials, and it's different pricing, and this, and that, or whatever. And that's certainly true. I think grading, if we look back, going back to pandemic times, PSA was way behind. It was very expensive to grade with PSA, even after they opened back up. Remember, they were closed for a year, then they slow rolled opening up. You're talking about like 18 months of really no to very limited 
grading through PSA. And the other companies were able to pick up their SGC, did a lot of growth during that time because they were open and they were taking submissions and really growing their brand. But it's not necessarily just the pricing specials. I think it really has to do with the players that are out there. If you look at just what's happening, a big one is Victor Wembanyama. Wemby is a, a big driver right now because when, when you think back, you had kind of the Zion and the Ja Morant craziness and you kind of had a lot of speculation around these players. Wemby really showed up his rookie year, didn't have any injuries his rookie year, just played strong, broke a bunch of different rookie records and was rookie of the year, an obvious rookie of the year. I think people are excited about that Spurs team that of course is not a good team, but it shows that, okay, this guy is for real and they're going to obviously build a team around him. They still have pop coaching, very popular coach and a great coach. You know, so now you've got kind of that young talent has entered the league. You look at the NBA finals there's no LeBron, there's no Steph Curry, not even close, not even in like speaking distance of this of this final. They're, it's not like they were even in the conference finals. These old timers, they're they're getting to the end. You can just see it, you can tell. It is now the young guys league. These up and comers are taking over. And Wembenyama is part of that. This was just the first year limited minutes. You know, they're kind of just slow rolling him out there, get used to the league. Exciting things ahead for Spurs fans and Wemby fans. So that's that's number one. C.J. Stroud, really, on the football side, took the world by storm. There's a lot of speculation on QBs in the NFL all over the place. Not Hell, not even just NFL QBs, college QBs with the Bowman U products. And now they've got even high school. Leaf just signed high school players now. Leaf has high school quarterbacks that they are signing to make trading cards out of. So... C.J. Stroud kind of shocked everybody with the Texans. Not that they didn't think he'd be any good. He was a what? He was a second overall pick. But but for them to get to the playoffs and for him to play as well as he did, a lot of excitement around C.J. Stroud cards, and they've been grading. The people have been grading the hell out of C.J. Stroud. Michael Jordan, a mainstay. Michael Jordan's. It's amazing with him because obviously you know the goat of basketball, but. The popularity with his trading cards as well just continues on and on. And it doesn't matter if you're buying very expensive Jordan cards or if you're buying $1 cards. They're always sellers. You know, people are always looking to buy, sell. Even those, you know, overprinted early 90s basketball cards of his, they're still really cool cards. You know, and a lot of people have nostalgia around those cards. So Michael Jordan helps drive this, drive this grading market as well. Shohei Otani, even though, you know, pitching might be off the table the same way that he was pitching before. He's still a huge name. He's gotten over kind of that that gambling, his agent, you know, doing it, or what, his translator, not his agent, his translator throwing money. Around. I mean, all that seems to be somewhat forgotten. I haven't heard much out of that story lately. It seems like the MLB just kind of like swept that under, get this idiot out of here, and we need to focus on the season. We're focused on Shohei Otani he still drives a lot of this grading activity. And then one here uh, that I don't really understand <laughs> that's on this list for May, Anthony Richardson. Anthony Richardson. Guys, this quarterback was not even good at UF. Can I just remind you of this? So, okay, maybe he's one that just, you know, maybe it's Jay Cutler who wasn't very good at Vanderbilt, didn't have a good team around him, and then actually played pretty good NFL quarterbacking. I know people say Cutler wasn't that good. Cutler was all right. Anthony Richardson hasn't done anything. He's been injured. He's done that. And he was never a good college quarterback. You still have speculation around a lot of these young guys. I just think it's funny. The stuff that the bloggers are going to throw around here at the National, I got the Anthony Richardson National Treasures. Who the hell cares? This guy has done literally nothing. But then also when he was playing, it's like saying Bryce Young. You know, Bryce Young hasn't showed us anything either. You know, so you're going to come out and say like, oh man, we got these Bryce Young downtowns. Who in the hell cares? Let the guy show you something first. Anyway, Connor Bedard and hockey. Hockey's got some great young scoring talent. Um, so the hockey card collectors, I think that they're in a really happy place right now. There's a lot, a lot of good talent. Caitlin Clark, and I'll end on Caitlin Clark on this list because I also have a little rant too, just about what I've been seeing with Caitlin Clark and the WNBA. So yesterday, Caitlin Clark, they're playing against, what is it, like the, the Chicago Sky, I think. And, and Reese is on that team. Reese that plays, you know, the villain Reese. Uh, Angel Reese is on, on Chicago's team, and they're playing each other. And there's also the, the really tall center that played for South Carolina is also on that Chicago Sky team. So they've got some bigs you know, that they're playing with, and they're going to be good. I mean, you can tell that team is good. Uh, what, one of their guards, the, the person that scored the most points in the game, one of the Chicago Sky guards just runs over after a basket and just shoulder checks Caitlin Clark 
into the ground. And it wasn't like I saw some people are like, oh, she flopped. She really sold that. I mean, it's that girl would have knocked me to the ground if she had shoulder checked me. Okay. So anyway, Caitlin Clark flies to the ground. They call it a common foul during the game. And this is a thing that's kind of like the, the WNBA hasn't had enough experience with this. They haven't had a Michael Jordan. They haven't had a Larry Bird, Magic Johnson. They haven't had a Wilt Chamberlain. They haven't had a star that is bringing eyeballs to the league in the same way that Caitlin Clark is. I'm not saying that they haven't had stars. The WNBA has had some stars, but let's not kid ourselves and pretend like the WNBA has, has been just a league that everybody's been watching and it's been very popular. What I will give credit for is been, it's been moving up in popularity over the last five years or so. But I think that has more to do with an overall interest in women's sports. You see the same thing with women's pro soccer. My, my sister is a coach at a professional soccer team here in North Carolina, so I can speak to this. Patrick Mahomes has invested in the female Kansas City team for women's soccer, pro women's soccer. So it's already on an incline. It's, it's moving up. And I think the product on the field, the product on the court, is a good product. It's getting better. It's getting better. But this is something where the league has got to figure it out. What the league doesn't need is for the star player that's bringing in, and I get it, she's a rookie. I get it, she's got to prove herself. This isn't like, let's give her all the fouls and let's make it easy on her. Compete, compete the same way that you compete. But the fact that there's not a technical foul called here, or there's not just more emphasis around trying to protect the stars of the league. And here you have, I get she's a rookie and she needs to prove herself but she is bringing a ton of energy and money to this league that has not been there before. And money talks, and you have to pay attention to this if you're the WNBA. I know the WNBA is not going to watch this video, but use your brain, and this sort of thing cannot happen. There needs to be more emphasis on it. It really should have been a flagrant two. Flagrant one in the NBA is really where guys going up for a basket, and it's a hard foul. Maybe a little bit harder than it, than it should have been. That's a flagrant one. Flagrant two is when someone just goes out of their way, you know, punches somebody in the face, shoulder checks somebody to the ground. That's a flagrant two and an ejection. That's what it should have been. You need to send a message to players that we can't intentionally try to hurt somebody because we're trash talking. That's, that's like the next level of it. That's the next level, okay? If you want to trash talk, that's fine. If you want to compete hard, that's fine. Hard fouls are fine. You know, punching somebody, knocking somebody to the ground. You know, it actually happened to Angel Reese, too. Angel Reese, and I don't know if they called a flagrant or, or what they ended up calling in the game. Should have been an ejection, but Angel Reese is going up for a rebound, and the girl is literally puts her in a headlock and brings her to the ground. It could have broken Angel Reese's neck. I mean, and I get it. Hey, look, it's pro sports. Hey, Dustin, let him play out there. That's fine. You know what? This isn't prison rules. You know, this isn't the, the XFL. When you have big money flowing into a league that hasn't seen it, it's time to get smarter. Time to get smarter, protect your players. And whether that's Caitlin Clark or Angel Reese or whoever that's going to be, but you can't have stupidness like this. Many of you will say, well, what about Draymond Green in the NBA? Yeah, Draymond got suspended. Like, they actually suspend people in the NBA. It happens. Anyway, that's all I've got today, my friends. Stay healthy, stay awesome, and I will talk to you again later.